Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Tom Asenzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I ship it. Yep, you ship it good. Da 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 da. Ship it. <laughs> uh, and, well, what are we shipping, Silver? Like, parcel? Ties? How about a battle of the blues between Rainbow Dash and Soren? Oh, that ship I do approve. Yes. When two ponies come along, you must ship them. <laughs> ah. But anywho, in this episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony Friends Forever issue 36. And this review is brought to you by Master of Lag. Thank you so much for sponsoring this review, my friend. So anywho, in this issue, Rainbow Dash follows Sorin to a remote location to help him with a dangerous mission. What mission would that be? Is it to spy on the Crystal Empire? Or is it more? Uh, there's always more. Yes. But with bad corny jokes aside, uh, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think, man? Oh, this was a fun one. This was a rare opportunity to give Soren some character. He's often been, well, he was mostly known for liking to have pie after a show. And then he sort of dropped off the map for a while. Then he was the victim of the Wonderbolts as they tried to very politely shove him out of the way to get Rainbow. I think everyone was still a little sour over that for a good long time. So here's the consequences of that. And so we get a, a look into Soren. We get a little bit more of a follow-up on Rainbow and that uh, getting over Newbie Dash. People are still very, very bitter over Newbie Dash. Mm, how so? Well, there was the whole debate over bullying and teasing versus military life mm. and the somewhat disconnect that people uh, feel when interpreting that, that episode. So here's a chance for Rainbow Dash to show her best to help Soren and to flesh out the Wonderbolts a little bit more. Plus, we see the most de devoted delivery mare in the entire of Equestria. Yes, even before she was a delivery mare. Somehow this fandom has powers that baffles me. It goes beyond logic. You're trying to bring logic to a fandom, you fool! <laughs> yes, and as for me, this comic was a fun read. I highly enjoyed this comic. The pacing was not bad. I... I how do I put this? This is one of the few issues where I believe that the pacing was just nice. It didn't... It didn't, it didn't felt too rush. It didn't felt to push like, it didn't feel like it had to tell the story ASAP. It took its time, and it told a really nice story. Not an ASAP ASAP? Indeed. <laughs> but anyway, with first impressions out of the way, let's get into reviewing. So, for you guys at home, if you have not read this comic yet, pause here and go read it. Welcome back. So, we start off this comic with... Our friends, the main five, talking about how the first snow of winter looks awesome and how magnificent it is. And before they could fully enjoy the snow and regretting every bad decision they ever done in the snow, Rainbow Dash had to come in with her cool style and saying that, hey, I look awesome, right? And since um, it's winter, the Wonder Balls are off duty and I get a vacation and I'm going to enjoy myself. Yay! Although, let us have the grand debate of this comic. Who's got the cutest winter outfit? Ah, let's see. I say Rarity. Rarity's winter outfit is cool. She, it looks cute. Like, she has it. Like, yeah, Rarity. For me, it's Rarity. What about you, Silver? I, I will vote for Rarity as well. It's, it's just the right look uh, and most practical. Twilight is going far too minimalist. You need to wear a hat in winter because you lose a lot of body heat off your head. I'd say Fluttershy is a close second with her sweater and earmuffs. Yeah, I, I, I vote for that one too. And a tie for third place would be Pinkie Pie and Applejack. Those two look cute. Like, Applejack's the farmer girl. She has the... Uh, what hat is that? I do believe Canadians wear that most of the time. I have no idea what the proper name for it is. Yep. But still, Pinkie Pie and Applejack gets third. And, yeah... Uh, Twilight gets last because she's just wearing a scarf. I know that your Alicorn status makes you immune to most threats, but come on, fashion. Fashion, effort, Twilight. Show some hustle. True that. And we get Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash 
with her snow goggles, her snowboard. Are you trying to be Sonic here? Oh, don't want to be like free Sonic Riders. I'm flying free. No, no, ah. no, no. And well, getting back on track, this confused me for a bit. There's somebody sc- screaming, or there's somebody saying "incoming" from the right. Then we see Spitfire coming from the left. What? <laughs> Well, that's just because she was so fast that she went around the world and outpaced her own uh, her own words. Yes. Yep. Uh, but Spitfire came in telling Rainbow Dash that, hey, Rainbow Dash, you have a secret mission to do. I need you to go to the um, Mount Everhoof. Is it Mount Everest? Uh, oh, Everhoof. Everhoof, yes. Uh, Mount Everhoof Outpost. And... Rainbow Dash says, is this a joke? Um, is this some kind of initiation or something? And Spitfire says, nah, I think Sorin is there and I want you to get him back. And Rainbow Dash says, why don't you go? And Spitfire says, um, I think because of that whole incident with the equestrian games, he might be pissed at me. So I don't think I'm the right pony to go and ask could you do this for me? Here's the manual on how to get there. And see ya! And, well, Rainbow Dash says, well, not given a choice. She has to do it. So she says she'll go. And I like the last panel of this page. Applejack says, anyone else want to come sit by the fire with me inside? <laughs> and everybody says, yes. I ship it. Don't care what. I ship it. da na 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 Ah, but still, that was cute. And I'm guessing the next day, Twilight goes to Rainbow Dash's house and tells her that, hey, I've read about the place and it's dangerous. And what is Sorin doing there exactly? I mean, aren't the Wonder Balls supposed to be on vacation or something like that? And isn't it dangerous and stuff? And Rainbow Dash says that Sorin is trying to prove himself because he flubbed at the recent show and he's doubting himself. And it takes somebody awesome like me to prove that he is awesome and stuff. So, yeah, sending Rainbow Dash is a bad choice. All shall uh, be given awesomeness by the Rainbow Dash. Indeed. Uh, what do you think, man? Like, sending Rainbow for this doesn't seem like the right choice. Well, it, it's kind of... I drew a comic about this uh, just just for giggles where Twilight basically asked Spitfire point blank, you sent Rainbow Dash to offer emotional support? And the final <laughs> scene is Spitfire hustling Fluttershy up the mountain. <laughs> oh, wow. But, it, how to describe this? One, it is between Wonderbolts. Mm-hmm. But Rainbow is not renowned for her empathy. She cares about others, but... Often she is a pony of action, and that action can sometimes make her far too impulsive to sit and listen. She's gotten better at it thanks to her relationship with Scootaloo. True that. But I gotta say, yeah, I'm I'm inclined to agree this was not the best choice. Uh, but when you think about it in terms of within the family, which is the Wonderbolts, uh, Rainbow Dash is the right choice because she's the only other flyer that could go there safely and has the experience in flying. Plus Fleetfoot, mm-hmm. she also participated in the Great Betrayal. Betrayal! Betrayal! I don't think she would have been a good choice either. Yeah, and also, who's the new um, Ponyville uh, Pegasi Wonderbolt? Oh, Thunderlane? Yeah, Thunderlane. I, I, I don't think Thunderlane would be a good choice too. If he's even a Wonderbolt at this point. He was part of the reserves for a good while. Mm, true that. And well... We need a story. So Rainbow Dash, be there. Go. Go forth, Dash. And conquer. Indeed. And Twilight explains, it's dangerous. Don't go alone. Take this. Rainbow Dash says, it's all right. I'm cool. The coolness factor will protect me. And we get this two-page spread where Spitfire explains every little detail of how to get to Mount Everhoof. Every little thing she does. Yep. Which is actually true. Yeah. Including the part about putting on the, what you want to call this, rain gear on. Yep. Oh, yeah. Turn on your light. Turn on your light, rain gear. <laughs> like, she should have done that earlier, but 
Spitfire didn't mention it. Uh, and yeah, it's a detailed map full with convoluted explanation of how to get there. At one point, Rainbow Dash says, Hey, it's right in front of me. Could I just fly straight in? And no, because the wind current is very dangerous. Like, there's a major wind tunnel. So, nope, you have to go around it. Although, Twilight would very much admire Spitfire's detailed instructions. I mean, this is on par with Twilight mapping out Starlight's uh, reunion in the, in the crystalline. She just knows every facet that Rainbow has to consider. She knows how her Wonder Bulls think. Yeah, the map is helpful. I mean, in terms of map giving, I say that's a really detailed explanation. Probably, I, I don't know, I don't fly, so could be wrong. But still, it does put the point across. And with all that traveling, Rainbow Dash arrives at the... What you would call this? Um, station, was it? No. Uh, the outpost. Yes, the outpost. Arrives at the outpost and... This outpost is interesting because at first glance, it's like one of those mountain cabins from one of those stories, you know, those stories where people try to escape civilization and whatnot. I'm mostly thinking of the Hateful Eight right now. Oh, true that. But still, we we are greeted to some ponies and griffins and also changelings. Wow. Yeah, what do you, what do, you do with a changeling? Hi, you tried to enslave our race. What the hey? I'm escaping the queen. Nobody knows I'm here. I'm hiding. You're not a very good changeling if you wear your normal guise. It's cool. Nobody cares. Grr. (laughs) Grr. And, well, Rainbow Dash goes around asking if they seen Sorin. And, well, everybody points out that you're the first one to... As for someone, usually people come here to hide from life and their problems. And the piano player? What do they call those people? The piano player? I don't know. The entertainment. The pianist? Yeah. The pianist? Yeah, I think so. You can call the pianist. No, the pianist just says, go as Jet, the bartender. Jet Glider. That's a cool name. Normally, I wonder why equestrian parents are so cruel. But the but this guy, he had good parents. They knew what's what. Yep, yep. Jet Glider. And, well, Jet Glider is a button. <laughs> uh, but still, uh, cool names aside, he greets Dash, saying that, ah, Call me Jet. Good to see a young pony like you. This time of year, I usually run short of hoops for the deliveries. We'll get you started right away. And, well, it seems that this is not the first time that Jet got ponies like Rainbow Dash around who wants to do odd jobs for cash or something like that. Oh, and we forgot to mention uh, the Thunder Gremlin. It's Uh, not a Tony Fleek's comic unless those little guys make an appearance. Yep, Uh, that's true. He's there. Uh, Do they control clouds to fly around, if I remember right? Well, they live in a thundercloud, usually. Uh, Yeah, so yeah, delivery jobs for him would be easy. But still, the... Tony Tony Fleece has his gremlins there around, so yay! It's a cameo! Woo! Uh, but Huzzah for cameos! Ta-da! Yep, yep. And, well, Rainbow Dash goes to Jet saying that um I'm looking for some pony. And this surprised Jet. And before Rainbow Dash can explain who she's looking for, um one of the Pegasi, I think, um Split Flap? Split Split flap, yes, I think split flap came to the bar, telling there's a Pegasi coming in too fast and he needs the runway lights or the fog lamp or whatever they call. They turn it on and said Pegasi comes in too fast and crashes into the trees. Yes. Well, I'm gonna say that's probably because they were shining the light directly in his face. When an airplane is coming in for a landing, you don't try to blind the pilot. Um, somebody more well knowledgeable than me would like to agree or disagree with Silver in the comments, please do, because I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you, you you use a light to highlight where they're supposed to land, not say, ha ha, got you in the eye. <laughs> ah, so true. Ah, but still, but still. Like we mentioned, Flyer overshoots the runway and slams to a tree. Said Flyer is Sorin. He walks back to the runway and says that, He's a little bit beaten up and embarrassed. Aww, can't be helped. Embarrassment. 
Yep. What could go wrong? Everything. <laughs> yes. Everything could go wrong. Uh, yes. And Jet tells Sorin, uh, awesome job on the delivery. Come inside and get some cider from Sweet Apple Acres. <laughs> <laughs> like, and suddenly Rainbow's like, T- trip's totally worth it. There's no Pinkie Pie for competition. Mm-hmm. Sorin asks Dash why she's there, and this Spitfire put her up to this and whatnot. And, well, Rainbow Dash says that, well, I'm here because Spitfire did. She told me to come here and get you back. And Sorin tells her that I need to prove myself because... I'm not sure I'm Wonderbot worthy or not. Ah, uh, poor Clipper. Clipper, <laughs> yeah. The name made sense too, now that you think about it. Well, considering what he went through at Rainbow Falls, uh, the poor guy, he just he just doesn't have good luck with that. Yeah. Although, let's be honest, cheerleader ponies caught his eye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the distraction, I say, the distraction. But let's put a pause on the backstory for... Sorry in a bit. And let's go to the next day because it's still dark. Rainbow Dash got her sleep and she says, Good morning or afternoon or evening. How can you even tell around here? Jet says, You'll get used to it. We manage. Meh. And we see that this place is not safe because on the next panel, we see a Pegasi, well, a delivery mare, um, not the one we're thinking of, is kind of beaten up. And a griffin nurse. You don't see those many around. They're not exactly renowned for their nurturing. True. I bet her bedside manner is awful. <laughs> True that. Uh, but the griffin looks like Grilda, but not really. But still, Rainbow Dash just asks where Sorin, and Jet says he was the first one out to deliver something. And smash! He's back. Hello. <laughs> it seems like Sorin's calling card is... Whenever he crashes, there he is. And yeah. And now we get the backstory of why Sorin is trying to prove himself because it seems that everyone from his friends to his family been telling him that he will never be a Wonderbolt. And once he got in, he doesn't feel like he deserves to be there. Well, we got just a few things in between. I just want to backtrack. One, Rainbow Dash drank all the cider meant for the people who actually run deliveries. Again... Was she really the best choice for this mission? Yeah, true, true that, true that. I mean, S- Sweet Apple Acre Cider is the best around, Equestria. But Rainbow Dash, those are 40 <laughs> delivery ponies. You ain't delivering anything. Think of the others. But she does have a point that she does not have to contend with Pinkie Pie, so... Yeah. Won't someone please think of the children? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. After that, Rainbow Dash talks to Sorin about the Wonderbolt thing. Like, she says, come on, you're a Wonderbolt. We're the best lives in Equestria. You've already proven yourself. And Sorin says, no, lately I haven't. Like, that whole debacle with the event, I messed up big time. And he mentioned that, well, like I mentioned before, he... All of his life, nobody believed that he could be a Wonderbolt. And he did become a Wonderbolt with hard work and a lot of training. And now, with the flub up he did, he has to prove himself once again. And suddenly, the alarm rang. And Rainbow Dash asked, what's that sound? And it's the extreme weather alarm. To Rainbow's surprise, hey, um, I thought things were bad. Nope, they got turned bad again. And behold, the door opens to the best male pony in all of Equestria. Da, 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 da. Muffin Pony. Yay! Muffin Pony, she she braved the weather just fine. Neither rain nor sleet nor, nor hail. Yes. Look at her in all her majesty. She is the best. Da, 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 da. Again. She's the best pony around. And she delivers a message to the outpost telling them that Yakistan is in need of medicine. It seems that the yak strain of the equine flu has hit them hard and they need a triple order of Everplant right away. Again, I must contend that natural selection is just gunning for them. <laughs> when are we going to just accept this? I'm sorry, I know it sounds cold, I know it sounds harsh, but maybe, maybe Mother Nature is trying to give you a subtle hint. 
the Rutherford family line needs to end. Well, there's always the coup, but the rest don't need to suffer. I mean, come on. No, this is this is nature's coup. Coo coo ka Uh but still but still. Go over destruction upon the yaks. Oh no. How could you? Doom Doom How could you? Uh, but I'm not doing anything, it's nature. Uh but anywho um the yaks... They're so stupid they pissed off the gods. Uh yes. Uh no. <laughs> oh god no. But anywho. We have such a dangerous mission and the yaks needing the medicine. Sorin steps up and says that I'll do it. I'll do it because I am brave and I am awesome and I got no idea what I'm doing. Rainbow Dash interjects and says that hell no you're not doing it. And Sorin says no, I'm doing this. And Rainbow Dash says okay, you're not doing this alone because I'm joining you. Suit yourself. Shipping starts. Starts, dude. I've been doing this since page one. What are you gone about? <laughs> uh, true that, but still, um, now, now strip it do, into do, shape. Do 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 do, or get some Michael Jackson. Just ship it, ship it, ship it, ship it. Uh, true, true that. But anywho, we are greeted to a really nice post from our heroes. Tell me that aviator jacket and aviator goggles don't look awesome on them. Like, dude, that is just pure awesomeness there. They look better than the Wonderbolt uniforms. True that, but still, the Wonderbolt uniform gives them aerodynamic mobility. This one gives them warmth, I think. I don't know. Their rumps are, are totally exposed, and their hooves are as well, so we could argue the practicality of it for a good while. True that, but they look cool. That's the most important part. <laughs> yes. Yes. But anywho, they soar. They soar high, and they go through trials and tribulations. Flying through mountain peaks, getting struck by lightning, I think, and Sorin coming in for the smooth save. Oh, yeah. Although, if you took that shot out of context, I don't think it would look as complimentary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, what are you doing? Let me go. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, uh, yeah, you know, stranger danger. I need an adult. Yep. But I am an adult. I am hilarious, and you will quote everything that I say. Uh, yes. Anyway. Next page, Rainbow Dash says thanks and compliments Sorin on the awesome flying. And yeah, I think I jumped the gun when I say that he needs to prove himself. Uh, this is the panel where it all starts. And well, Silver, you want to take it from here? Well, this is where Sorin really talks about his past as uh, he never had Rainbow's raw talent. In fact, a lot of the Wonderbolts were sort of flying prodigies. He has to work for it a lot harder. Well, okay, that make, that sounds wrong. It makes it sound like they're just coasting by on talent. They work hard for it as well. But he feels he's at a disadvantage, and he has to work twice as hard just to keep up with their raw skill. Some people just seem to adapt to a situation or a role like a fish to water. Other people really have to learn how to swim. He's given it his all. But setbacks like the Wonderbolt show uh, or falling in Rainbow Falls really can mess with that confidence. Mm -hmm. And so he, he's doing this to work hard. And I appreciate this. I appreciate that it's a story about how a team is not all comprised of one style. Some folks tackle the same role in different ways. And so this was uh, very important to him. Mm -hmm. And this reminds me of the other two new recruits. Um, I forget their name. What was their name again? The adorable couple, Vapor Trails and... Oh, Vapor Tr Sky Stinger. Yeah, Sky Stinger. Those two are totally the opposite of each other. One is a naturally gifted flyer, while the other one works hard at things. And with Sorin here, it's the same thing. And Sorin reminds me of a shounen anime character. Like Naruto, where he works really, really hard to get where he's at now. Oh, he's Rock Lee. Oh, yeah, Rock Lee. Lee's also that too. He needs bigger eyebrows, though. Oh, yeah, true that. But Lee is not gifted in the art of the ninjutsu. But he has potential in taijutsu, and he excels at it. And he trains every day to prove his worth. And Sorin here is doing the same, except he's no ninja. He's a flyer stuff. And let's get off the Naruto bandwagon, because that thing is old. So, um, 
After explaining himself and telling Rainbow Dash that he needs to prove himself, uh, and Rainbow Dash telling him that we all have bad days and we all flop around, like, take a look at me, I'm Rainbow Crash. Come on. Like, we all have our ups and downs. Like, what we learn from our experience makes us the better pony. And, well, Rainbow Dash here also mentions that, hey, um, Spitfire, he's not here because she didn't want to be here, but she thought you might be mad at him, so sending me was kind of the ch- right choice at the time. But you know what? This storms has passed over, and it seems to be safe. So let's go make that delivery. And so they save the yaks, and so natural selection is thwarted once again. Curse you. And well, You've defied the natural order! The order! Yep. Uh, but still, uh, once the day is saved, once again by our heroes... They arrive at the outpost and greeted by Spitfire. Oh, what a coinkidink, she's there. And Spitfire says she's sorry for making him feel bad and sending Crash instead of herself. And she made a mistake. And Sorin asks, um, how did you know I was upset about you not coming? And Rainbow Dash sure points to the awesome male mare at the side, yeah. So like, you may have taken advantage of the service. Yep. That's right. When you witness pure awesomeness, you don't let it go wasted. Indeed. And, well, with that, uh, how do you want to end this? Because there's more, but there's nothing really needed. We get to see them flying on some pretty awesome, just some awesome poses for flight. You look at that and you want to be, I want to be like Superman. I mean, Rainbow Dash. Yeah. yeah. And, well, before that, um... Sorin says thank you to Jet for everything, and Jet says no, thank you, because you made us a lot of cash. Yeah. <laughs> you took more risks than anyone, but let's see here. Oh, and then it looks like uh, Mudflap is trying to make some moves on the uh, piano- pianist, and I'm like, I ship it! Yep. I ship it all! <laughs> yep. And it seems that that Griffin there is getting caught out of his cash. Yeah. But I'll ship them too! Yeah. Why not? It's shipping forever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shipping everybody. Yeah, yeah. So, little John. <laughs> yeah. You ship it. Yeah. What? <laughs> uh, the SNL skit. Uh, that's always good. But anywho, with that next page, fly awesomely in the sky, f- going to the Crystal Empire. Yeah. And well, let's. Th- Let's dive on the yaks on the way home. <laughs> oh, God, no. Ah. So, now that I'm looking at this, uh, it seems that Mount Everhoof is quite close to the Crystal Empire then. Hmm. Okay. You can, it's it's a shining monument to how bleeding useless <laughs> the Crystal Ponies are. Uh, and that comic ends. Uh, so, Silver. So, seriously, what, what do the Crystal Ponies do exactly? No, no idea, man. Can someone explain this to me? I want to know. I feel like Jerry Seinfeld. Could someone explain? I'd like to know. <laughs> uh, no no idea, man. No idea. But anywho, if that comic ends, and let's go to final thoughts. Silver, what do you think about this comic? Oh, I, I enjoy it so much. It's it's one of those rare moments that really gets to characterize uh, Soren. And I think that's important. Dealing with the idea that teams are comprised of different individuals with different skill sets. And people have to approach things in their own unique way. And yet that doesn't mean you can't support them or or perhaps bond over a shared struggle. Mm -hmm. So I I thoroughly enjoyed that. High props all around. And yet it it does provide a follow-up for both Rainbow Falls and Newbie Dash, as the Wonderbolts didn't come out of those episodes looking their best. Not always. But they're getting better. I got better. (laughs) Indeed, indeed. As for me, this comic was a fun read. Like, I didn't felt any part of the comic felt rush. It felt... Hmm. Did I... I feel like I'm repeating myself. Did I mention this earlier on or was it previously in the last episode review? I think it's this one. Uh, I think it was when we were talking about the movie. No. That every... That every... My, my Little Pony has sort of a rush resolution staple, so you shouldn't... Uh, yeah. Nah, I don't expect otherwise. I think that was off the record, but I think it was earlier on when I was talking about this comic. And yeah, 
This comic felt natural. Like, it didn't felt rushed. It has its tempo. It, it had a nice flow, a rhythm, if I were to say. It felt natural. And the conflict between Sorin and his confidence was kind of the key point. Like, it didn't felt forced. Uh, it was set up at the very beginning where he flubbed an act and his confidence was shaken. And to prove himself, like any other shounen anime character, he went to train. And it couldn't be at the local gym. He had to go to the most dangerous part of Equestria. Yeah. And with that, he, well... He triumphs. <laughs> yes, and after his struggle and trials and tribulations, he triumphantly got where he needed to be. And with that, he got his confidence back. Spitfire said sorry about the whole incident with the friendship games. And he's all okay and cool. It's all cool. Mm -hmm. And well, with that episode ends. Like I, I personally like this comic. Like It's one of those really nice comics to read. And Tony Fleece's art here has gotten better. Like, Have you noticed that his art is on par with Andy Price's now. Oh yes, he's a very, very close second uh, favorite of mine. I still like Andy Price mostly for the uh, for the Style. Easter eggs and visual gags. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, he's come a long, long way. He's gotten far more comfortable drawing these ponies, and having gotten to talk to him, he's a really cool guy. Oh, that's awesome! And like. You remember way back when, when we did this whole review thing. I think Fleece's first comic appearance was with Rainbow Dash, with Rainbow Dash's Micro. And looking yes. at where he is now and dealing with this Friends Forever issue 36 is with Rainbow Dash and Sorin. And he has improved tremendously. And it's wonderful to see. It's, you know, hang in there with people. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all one can do. True. that, And you know what? With the Legends of Magic series, he's the one um, on, in charge with that. He's mending the helm while Andy Price is taking yes. the uh, movie prequels. Well, uh, let's see here. It's been Agnes. I thought it was Agnes Garboska. Uh, no, I think. No, I got I got to double check. All right. Let's see here. But anyway, basically, I I really enjoy how far he's progressed. It's quite wonderful. Yeah, and I, I highly enjoy his art now. Like he has a rough patch in the very beginning, like any other artist who comes into this fresh without any references or without any prior experience. But still, he has improved a lot since his very beginning. In the what early two thousand and twelve was it? I think mm -hmm. I forgot. But, but still, he has improved, and I appreciate his hard work for it. Well, just for clarification, the the Legends of Magic that have come out thus far have been done by Brenda Hickey and Heather Breckel, but Johnny Fleeks will be covering the big, I believe, three-part arc where they all come together. Oh, really? No. I, I've always thought that he's done all of the art for the Legends series. Uh, it's been it's been the core team of Whitley, uh, Hickey, and Breckel, as far as I can tell. Oh, okay. Well, since we're on the wiki page... Uh, let's see. Artist, Brenda Hickey. Ah, yes. You're right. You're right. My bad. Um, one to six is Brenda Hickey. I, why did I talk about Tony Fleece? Could it be because of the mainline stories? Huh. That's odd. Well, artist aside, they're all, all of their art looks good. It's just that if you're counting the names, it, it gets muddy in between. So let's not. Uh, well, with the review done, we have another review to deal with next week. And since next week is the week of the hello, what are we going to review next week, Silver? We are going to honor a Patreon-sponsored review with Alvin and the Chipmunks Meet the Wolfman. Yep. It's super speaky, but maybe a little bit furry as well. Oh, yes. I have not seen this one at all, I think. I'm trying to remember with my head. But nah, like nah, I, I haven't seen this one. In fact, I haven't seen any of the chipmunk movies except the one where they meet the chipettes. That was a really good one. I remember watching that. That was a really fun watch when I was a kid. Oh yeah, the original chipmunks movie. Yep, the one where they had the the epic Roman battle. Yep, yep, and also the musical battle. Yeah, uh, 
I that movie was confusing for me as a kid. Like they were put into slavery. What? <laughs> well, it was not exactly the most racially sensitive. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, it was okay in their time. You know, I mean, during that time was okay. You all right? <laughs> <laughs> it was the eighties. We didn't care. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, but anyway, that that review next week for Halloween's weekend is brought to you by myself like thank you so much for that one and well if you guys at home would like to well support the show you can do so at patreon.com slash mbs show with every support you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcasts and also deleted content and exclusives and also a huge thank you from me and talking about thank yous i like to thank lurker cat Demetrikatoria, Starstream and also myself like thank you so much for the awesome support guys you have been really awesome and with that, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And we'll guys catch you next week with a spooky episode of the MBS show. I got no flying outros. Like, no. I, I can't think of anything flying related or uh, emotionally scarring ones. You got any? United? Oh no. If you want to go with emotionally scarring. Oh no, I'm regretting this already. You want emotionally scarring, I provide it. Yeah.